You have taken away my dreams and my childhood with your empty words, and yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering, people are dying, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? Still perfect. Hello darlings, it's Tess. Today I have a create with me video that is showing the embellishments I did on the back cover of my copy of Greta Thunberg's book, No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference. I'm undertaking this project because my emotions for this book and the cause it represents are numerous and uh, long established. Let me show you how. The time continuum has been disrupted the planet is dying. This is fine. Basically the only thing kind of giving me hope and making me think that maybe we can get through it together, you know, it won't be perfect, but maybe we can survive, is like basically Greta. We children are doing this because we want our hopes and dreams back. I hope my microphone was on. I hope it's okay. You should see me in a crowd. I'm gonna run this nothing to this is a book of her speeches that my mom got for me and it's just been like my bible recently. Hi, editing Tess popping in and just to give you an update in relation to Greta and her cause, I'm now editing this video more than a month after I actually filmed it. Well done Tess. Ooh, guess what Tess? You're still going to be editing a version of this video in 2020 after not using the first version. Editception. That means that the global climate strike um, that Greta has been promoting and discussing has already taken place on September 20th. Going and attending was just the greatest sense of catharsis and it was so incredible to be there. I went to the protest here in Sydney and there were between, I believe, 50,000 and 80,000 of us on the ground there. We were listening to these tiny little children, like ranging from like sort of high school age down to the younger speaker was like 10 and she was just dragging our prime minister in Australia so much because he sucks with climate change. The thought that me and other people my age have been a little part of creating this protest culture where kids that are younger and younger are realizing that they have a right to be at a protest, but then also more than that, they deserve to lead the protest if they want to. Like, our youth and our childhood, as people in their mid-twenties, has been screwed with enough, but kids even younger than us are, like, doubly losing their childhood because they're still children. So, seeing their righteous anger and their organisation and them holding banners at the front of the protest and appearing on the news, like... Anyway, I just thought I'd give you that update, and it was absolutely amazing, and if you didn't go this year, you have to go next year. Together we rise, the power is with us as the people, and let's shut the city down for the next protest. Yeah, it's a lot. So I am a huge fan of embellishing books that mean a lot to you, whether it's inside them or on the cover. I kind of see it the same as how Bibles used to be illuminated or have marginalia back in medieval times. If there is something that you love so much that it is kind of a personal Bible, and this book is certainly one of mine, then have a go at decorating it and giving the book back some of the positive energy that it's given to you. Yes, I'm talking about books as though they have feelings. If you vibe with this, please subscribe to watch far more videos of me getting overly emotional about the written word and other kinds of beautiful objects. I just have a lot of feelings. A common embellishment of fancy books that we all know is putting gold on the edge of the pages, gilding them, but I didn't know how to do that without sticking the book's pages together completely, so I brought that element in by using some of my yellow gold foiling to match Greta's jacket and putting it around her portrait on the back of the book so that it created a frame for her. I then took inspiration from tarot cards, which if you don't know, they're a kind of divination tool used by witches and pagans and all kinds of people worldwide, where you use cards and their different names and meanings in order to give insight into your life or into a question that you might be asking. The idea is kind of that the correct cards will be drawn as you pull them out of the deck in order to suit what you currently need to hear. And let me tell you, tarot cards are very often the kind of tough friend you have that just goes, I love you an awful lot, but you need to get your crap together. 
tarot cards are that friend. I'm that friend. Oops. So in tarot, there are number-based cards, similar to the way there are ones in a regular deck of cards, except in tarot it might be the Eight of Pentacles and the Three of Swords, and then in normal cards that would be the Eight of Hearts and the Three of Spades, for example. Tarot cards also have personified ones, the same as a regular deck, except instead of King, Queen, Jack, uh, some examples of personified Major Arcana in a tarot deck include the High Priestess, the Hermit, the Lovers, Judgment, very interesting things. I love them a lot. Who could ask for anything more? I was especially thinking of a set of nine Major Arcana tarot cards that were made by Eleanor Hardwick and Minna Gilligan for Rookie Magazine in 2012. Eleanor took the photos, Alexandra Moonage did the styling, you can see how amazing it is, and then Minna illustrated and collaged the photos into the cards. They were really the first tarot style cards that I had ever looked at up close. I'd always known what they were, but because these ones just, you know, slid into my orbit being made by artists that I love so much, I really found myself sitting there really, really studying them and then googling other kinds of tarot cards. It was a very good time. And I love them so much, they're still up on my wall, right over there. Rookie is the best thing ever, by the way, if you didn't already know. So because tarot cards are really associated with this idea of telling the future, or at least giving some insight, I decided it made a lot of sense to make one of this person who is fighting so hard for the future to become better. Like, if the future is the one that she tells, where we all take enough action, then we're gonna be fine. <laughs> so I knew that her card slash book needed the right title, and so I looked at the existing names of Major Arcana, and there were some that are sort of almost right for her, like the Empress and the High Priestess, because they refer to such strong women. But I wanted something slightly different that spoke to her youth. We might view her as this symbolic, amazing empress leader of this movement, but one of the reasons why she wants climate action is so she can be a child again and enjoy a healthy world, not have the heavy authority that a high priestess or an empress would have. You can see I'm putting way too much thought into this. So we can see. But on we go. So to give her a unique name that was more suited to her, I considered the Rebel, but I eventually decided on a slight variation of it, which is the Darer. I was considering Old Norse words, or of course Swedish ones as well, that I might use. So I searched to see if the name Thunberg, or she has that fabulous Swedish way of pronouncing it that I can't do, it's like Thunberg or something. My name is Greta Thunberg. Oh, she's so cool. Anyway, back to the name. I couldn't find anything that told me what the last name Thunberg supposedly meant or stood for. But then something else I remembered was that Thorin, the name of the Dwarf King in The Hobbit, no! is Old Norse for Dara. This is Thorin, son of Thrain, son of Thor. We have come to reclaim our homeland. Her name is obviously Thunberg and not Thorinberg, but you know, there's a TH on the start of Thun and an N on the end, and that's the same as Thorin, and that was good enough for my pathetic, only English-speaking brain. <laughs> this word is Norse, so is Greta. I love this direct translation that I hadn't really heard used before in English, Dara. I'd never heard somebody say it. So I went for that as her arcana title. Dara is also especially right, because immediately afterwards I of course remembered her blistering how dare you speech. How dare you! And it's there that she shows us the right kind of Dara. She dares to speak the truth and do good, rather than the world leaders she's speaking to who dare to let the world burn up because of their terrible decisions. <laughs> So once I decided on her title, I collected different stickers and paper elements to use, mostly of the natural world, being that it's that that she's trying to save, so I used images of plants, animals, and other natural things such as shelves. I also put in a classroom globe to represent the fact that, as she said, she should be in school. I have a sailboat to represent the yacht that she travels on. 
and I made sure to find some pink coral, not just to represent ocean life, but to mirror the iconic hot pink dress that she wore for the How Dare You speech. Also the same dress she was wearing when she got caught death staring the back of Orange Vermin's head. Watch me make them bow. Yes, I call this guy Orange Vermin. He's a pedantic, pontificating, pretentious bastard, a belligerent old fart, a worthless steaming pile of cow dung, figuratively speaking. And there's nothing you can do about it. Ah. I also included a strawberry ice cream cone as a second nod to that hot pink dress and also to represent her youth. I collaged a little spot for her title down below, then drew the elements up and around to create a frame for her. I always just see mistakes in what I make, but I'm happy that this makes her look so regal, I suppose. She is so important to the world and to me that I just really enjoy her looking like a gilded saint. But at the same time remember that what she wants isn't for children like her to have to be leaders, but to simply enjoy a world that isn't dying. I'll be honest with you, sometimes I really sort of struggle to listen to her to the statistics that she states so plainly. Like, sometimes I have to push it out of my mind in order to make me feel like it's worth getting out of bed for the day. But then that same voice, Greta's, gives me that hope, even if it's moments after she's quoted some kind of terrifying fact. Here is something she said to US Congress in September of 2019. You must not spend all of your time dreaming or see this as some political fight to win and you must not gamble your children's future on the flip of a coin. Instead, you must unite behind the science. You must take action. You must do the impossible. Because giving up can never, ever be an option. It's true, my dears. I love you. Keep going.